Welcome back, everyone. Up until now, we've been studying a programming language called JavaScript. Uh, and JavaScript, as we mentioned, was a Turing complete language that allowed us to build some interesting applications. Now, the thing, the way we ran JavaScript was that basically using the browser, right? We would just put a source reference from a script tag inside our HTML to some JavaScript, which had a .js extension. And then the browser, when it rendered the HTML, would then realize, oh, there's a reference now to some JavaScript. Let me load that up, let me download it, and let me run it. And that's how you run JavaScript. Today, we'll be learning another language called Java. It sounds similar because both JavaScript and Java have, well, the word Java in it. Um, the reason for this is an accident of history. It's not, the two are actually not the same thing. They're very different languages with different, very different approaches to programming. So one of the key things that I think you, you need to understand in order to start programming in Java is to understand compilation. What do I mean by this? So JavaScript is known as a load and go language. What I mean by load and go is this. You take the source, the code that you actually write, and you give it directly to the execution engine, which then just runs it, right? You wrote JavaScript, you referenced it, and then the browser just ran it magically. In many programming languages, this is not what happens. What you have to do is first translate or compile your language into another language that then the computer knows how to execute. Remember that your computer at the end of the day underneath everything is memory and a processor. A processor is a computer, um, sorry, is a calculator. And what does a calculator understand? Yeah, exactly. Numbers, right? Zeros and ones. It understands numbers, right? So somehow our programming languages have to go from, you know, const, you know, age is equal to 50 to a bunch of numbers, right? There has to be a translation, a compilation, if you will. Again, in JavaScript, this compilation, this translation into machine language was happening at runtime without you even seeing it. In C++, for example, you have to compile your programming language, your C++ language, into something else, machine code, that then gets handled to, handed to the processor and the processor executes, okay? In Java, it's something in between. What you have to do is first compile your language, Java, your programming language, into something else. This is called byte code. Okay, bytecode is not machine code per se, it's a language in between. Then there is another application called Java Virtual Machine, JVM. It's an actual program that sits on your computer. And what happens is when you translate your, your programming language into bytecode, this other language, you then give that language to the JVM, to the Java Virtual Machine, which then runs it. That is to say, translates it into machine code, giving it to the processor, the processor executes it. Again, three different ways. JavaScript, you have the language, you give it to the execution engine, and it translates into machine code as it runs. In C++, you translate your programming language into machine code, which you then give to the processor and it runs. In Java, you first com uh, convert your language into bytecode, this intermediary language, which you then give to an application called the Java Virtual Machine, the JVM, that then executes it, turning it into machine code and giving it to the processor. Did that make sense? Okay, and you can see kind of what happens here. So you have your Java code, your Java code, just like in Java, JavaScript, you write, you put it in files, you know, that end with .js, right? In Java, you're going to do the same thing, but it's going to end with .java. Makes sense. So you have these .java files. Then you run a compiler 
The name of the compiler is Java C. Java C standing for compiler, so Java compiler. You run that and it turns those, class, those um, file names, those .javas, into another language, remember, bytecode, that have a .class extension. That's the bytecode. Then that bytecode is given to this Java virtual machine, this program that sits in between, that then runs it, that converts it into machine code. Now, a question. Why do you think we need a JVM? Why don't we just convert it into machine code and then just run it on the computer? Can anyone guess? Go. Each operating system has different ways of understanding the code. Very good. Uh, the actual, the architecture of the hardware, actually, yes. So, basically, when I say machine code, that language isn't the same for every possible processor, right? Because machine code contains in it instructions, right? Do this, then do this, then do this, an algorithm, if you will. These instructions are slightly different depending on what processor you're using, for example, right? So if you compile your code into machine code, you can't then just take that and give it to a Mac user, give it to a Linux user, and give it to a Windows user, and expect everything to work. It won't. So if you're writing in C++, if you want your program to run both on a Mac and on a Windows, you have to do one compilation, one translation to machine code that will run on a Windows and another translation that will run on a Mac. Furthermore, you have to see if you're translating into 30, you know, 64-bit uh, or 32-bit. So basically the translation is not the same everywhere. It's a little bit different. So, if you're writing a program in C++, you have to do lots of these translations, and then when users want to download your program, they have to download the, comp the compilation for their operating system. Okay. Have you noticed that very often when you guys go to a website, it says download for Windows or download for... Why isn't there just one download? Why isn't it just download me? Because it's different. The, the machine code for Windows is different from the machine code for Mac. Understand? Yeah. Now. The advantage of having a Java virtual machine in between is this. Well, let me zoom in. Is this. You compile your code into bytecode one time. One time. And you give that same bytecode to every operating system. And each operating system have a, has a Java virtual machine that will then translate that into the local machine language. So the JVM running on a Mac will convert your bytecode into the local Mac ver architecture machine code. The Windows one will convert it for the machine pro uh, pr uh, processor. You guys get it? Yeah. So it's like an intermediary that will do the compilation for you at runtime. Got it? Okay. So that's Java. Um, what do you need to do to begin programming in Java? For JavaScript, you didn't really have to download anything, right? You already, all of you have browsers. I assume most of you already had Chrome anyway. Uh, so you already had an environment to execute your JavaScript, right? All you have to do is just open your HTML in the browser and boom, JavaScript just runs. Magic. Awesome. With Java, you may not be so lucky. You may have Java on your computer, but you may not. What you need is a JDK, Java Development Kit. The Java Development Kit is a set of tools that help you run and execute and compile Java. So one of the things that you need, for example, is a Java compiler, the thing that will convert your Java files into bytecode, your .class files, that you can then run on the JVM. Hey, that you can then run on the JVM, on the Java Virtual Machine. So the first thing I want you guys to do when you start writing Java is to go uh, to Oracle's website and download JDK, the JDK for Java. But wh what is Oracle? Where, where do I download Java from? Thank you. Write it in Google, Google will tell you. Good. Um, questions up until this point? Okay, so um, this is an example of a Java program. It's, the nice thing about this is now you can use the knowledge that you've gained from programming in JavaScript and apply it here. Um, 
What do you think this does? For those of you who do not know, if you know Java, you're cheating. If you do not know Java, what do you suppose that does? Yeah, it's just like console log. It's the equivalent of console log, right? You're saying print line to whatever the system out is. System out is like the console, log is the print line. So what is print line? What is this thing? What is it? It's a function. Look, you're putting something in a hole. Remember? You, the way you call a function is, and then you can stick stuff into the hole, and then it does something. And in this case, you're putting this into the hole. Well, what is this? It's a string. We know that too. Look, a different language, but you can understand it. Kind of cool, right? One thing to note, though, in JavaScript, strings can either be uh, created using double quotes or single quotes, right? In Java, it has to be double quotes. Single quotes are not allowed. Yeah, you have to use double quotes. So in this case, I have an object. Yes? What do they st stand for, the single quotes? Uh, string. What do you mean? The, the, the single ones. In, in the oh, so, oh they, don't, they don't. You can just use them inside of your... It's, just, it's like M. Oh. It's just a character. Oh. Yeah. Um, okay, so and what is system? Object. It's an object. What is, what is out? A key. a key which has a value of an object. What is print line? A key that has a value of a function. Exactly. Well, easy. Okay, cool. A different language, by the way. Like, this isn't even JavaScript, and we know this. Cool. Okay, and we're calling a function. Uh, what do you think this is? Function. It's a function, too. Yeah, see, it takes arguments. Uh, and what is this? Yeah, it's a variable. It's one of the arguments that we're taking. In this case, it's only one. This is the part that might throw you off. In JavaScript, we just write the variable name, right? We just say like, you know, age or whatever. Just the name of the variable that we want in our functions. In Java, you also have to specify the kind of variable that you have. Guess what this means. You're right, this <laughs> string means string, good. What do you think that is? Array. String, array. String, array. Array of strings. Huh. It's a list of strings. So args is a variable that contains inside of it a list of strings. Cool. I get that. Okay. All right. Um, what do you think that is? Guess. Just. Yeah, you notice how this function does not return anything? There's no return blah blah blah, right? That's why you have void. This will tell you what the function returns. Void means nothing, right? So this function, when it runs, does not return anything. Therefore, we, spe we specify void. One thing that you will notice in Java that is slightly different from JavaScript is you have to say more things explicitly, right? In JavaScript, you didn't have to say what the function returns. You just either return something or you don't, right? In Java, you have to say this function is going to return a number. And if it does not return a number, it's an error. Or you say this function doesn't return anything. It just, in this case, prints to the console, you know, I'm a simple program. That's what it does. It does not return anything, therefore, the return is void. Nothing. Don't worry about what that means, don't worry about what that means, for now. But questions for just this part. Does anyone have questions there? If you want all functions to return something, say something instead of void, huh? Exactly. But you don't write something, you say exactly what you want to return. So if you want to return a string, you write string. If you want to return a number, you write int or whatever. I'll, we'll get to that in a moment. The kind of number you're returning. Instead of the void. Instead of the void. Yeah. Is that clear? We'll elaborate more on this later. Don't worry. This is just an introduction. Okay. So now, so now, let me show you how you can actually write Java on your computer. So the first thing I will do is I'll create a directory on my desktop. So let me open up my find, finder. Uh, where is it? Here we go. Okay, so on my desktop, I'm going to create a 
uh, hang on. A new folder called, uh, what should I call it? Java, boy? Java code, why not? It's a stupid name, but whatever. So this is the name of my project. Remember in our homeworks, you would create a project called like homework one or homework two. Okay, so this is my Java project. Um, if you were writing some application like, I don't know, Facebook, this would be called, you know, Facebook app or something. Okay, so, okay, so this is my application. Inside of this, I'm going to create a file. Um, actually, you know what? I'll just open this up in my Sublime editor. Wait, so file, open, uh, desktop. Where's my Java code? There it is, and I open it. Okay, so now here is just a directory. And what I can do is I can add a file to it and let's call it, uh, let's save it as hello.java. Okay, so if we go back here, you can see that in my Java code, I have a file that's just called hello.java. Notice that I begin with a capital letter. This is not a requirement, but it's, I suggest you do that. Okay, call your files with capital letters in Java, not JavaScript, in Java. Everyone understood what I just did? I created a directory, inside of that I put a file called hello.java. That's it. Any questions? Uh, the capital letter is, or like, why is it necessary? You'll see, just, it's not necessary, but I, I suggest you do it capital and I'll tell you why in a moment. Any questions up until now? Okay, the second thing you do is you write public class and then the name of your file. It has to be exactly the same. Like that. Notice how this is exactly, exactly the same as the name of the file, hello.java, and this is hello. Yeah? Then in here, you, you start writing your code. So in the example we had, we had a function called main, remember? One of the things that I want you guys to memorize is this, public static void main. <laughs> Say it with me, public static void main. One more, public static void main. Public static void main. What did that, do you remember what the function took as an argument? Strings, a list of, it wasn't just string, string, it was a list of strings. And then we give it a name. I don't wanna, we could call it bogus, sure. But why don't we call it args just you know, so because it's arguments, you want it to be a bit more standard. When I create a function, I need a start and an end. How do I do that? Curly braces, exactly, boom. Just like in JavaScript, easy. So now I want to just print something to the console. What did I do, do you remember? System dot out. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. System.out.out. Print. Okay, now you can write print. You can also print print ln. Ln stands for line. The difference is very simple. Print will just print the line and stop here. So if you print again, it will print next to it. Print line will print and go to the next line. Got it? Okay. So uh, print ln is very commonly used, so that's what we'll do. And let's print, I don't know, 34. Why not? Save that. Now, what do I need to do to run this? Who remembers? I need to compile it into bytecode. Into a, I need to turn this hello.java into hello.class. This intermediary language that JVM will then convert into machine code and run it. So, what do I do? Well, I open up my terminal. Uh, hang on, okay. So let me go to my desktop. Okay, I'm in my desktop now. Remember how we were using this for Git and stuff? Yeah. So you know how to do this, right? Yeah. Okay, so just navigate using, you know, CD, change directory, to the directory where you have your Java files. I put it in my desktop, remember? So CD, what was it, Java code? Yeah. And here's, here. oh, let me make this bigger, sorry. One second. Wait, can you guess? Uh, hang on. Yeah, you can see? Okay. Uh, 
Okay, so right now if I ls list uh, files and directories, I get hello.java, right? That is what is inside. I have installed the Java development kit. What that means is I have a program called Java C. C stands for compile. Java C, Java compile. Fine. So I Java C, hello.java. Run. Huh. I wonder what happened. Let me ls. Ooh, look, we now have this other thing called hello.class. So this is the one we wrote. This is the one that was just generated when I ran Java C. Okay, so now I want to run hello class. What is the program that I use to run hello class? The Java vir virtual, it is itself bytecode. I now need to give it to the JVM, the Java virtual machine to run it. The way you run Java virtual machine, the JVM, the way you invoke the JVM is by writing Java. Easy. And then you, you specify the class that you want to run, the bytecode, the file, if you will, that you want to run. It's just hello. Ooh, I got, ah, did you see? I got a 34. What was my code again? Hang on, let me zoom out. Let me zoom out. Okay, let me zoom in. Look, I did print out 34. You see how it's the same thing? If we change this to a string, how do I make a string? Double. Double, exactly. So, yay, Java is fun. Okay, so I save that. What do I need to do now? Again, I have to compile it. So I go here. Oh, let me zoom in so you guys can see. Uh, can, can you see what I'm writing? Java C, hello.java. Okay, now Java, hello. Yay, Java is fun. Notice when I run Java, I don't write Java, hello.class, hello.whatever. I just write the name, uh, this name here. You see, I just write Java and then the name that I put here. Remember, this name is exactly the same as the name of the file. The file is called hello.java. Here I say public class hello. If the class if the file name was person, what would be what would I put here? Person. person. And then here I would say, you know, java c person.java to compile it and then java person to run it. Fine? Go. Yes it does. So, does it show errors he says. So let's accidentally, oops. Uh, create a string using single quotes. Save that. Let's come here uh, and do Java C. Ooh, let's read what it says. Error, unclosed character literal, system dot out dot print line. And look, there's like a little arrow. Can you see it? There's an arrow that says exactly where it is. See, it says here. So then you go, ah, oh, oops, you know, and then you go back to your code and you go, ah, oh, okay, all right, then you change that there, and then you say, oh, okay, I'm done, I fixed that one, that's fantastic. Um, you go Java C again, and you get another one saying, wait, something's wrong, this is, there's, oh, and you go, oh, one more, okay, and you come here and you fix that, and now things should work. Good. Yes? Yes, of course. What is the difference uh, in the argument? Is this string or number or what? The main function. Uh, you mean here, this? Yes. Okay. We'll talk about variables very soon, in just a moment, and that will help you understand what I mean by this. Yeah? So in, just give, give me five minutes. And if I don't answer it, then come back to me. Go. Is it case sensitive? Everything is... Yes, I think it is. Yes. I think in general, okay, think of it this way. Whenever you're programming, just assume everything is case sensitive. Just make that as, even if it's not, it's going to be very rare that it's not. Almost everything is case sensitive all the time. The variable names are case sensitive, you know, object names are case sensitive, attribute names are, everything in your universe is going to be case sensitive. Case sensitive as in, 
case sensitivity. Yeah. Um, other questions. This is good. Other questions. Yes. What? Just look. Maybe in some cases it's not case sensitive. Maybe you're right. But just to so you don't have bugs. Just program in your head that everything is case sensitive and you will never make a mistake. The problem with this is if you think it's not going to be case sensitive, you have to now know what is case sensitive and what is not. It's extra. Cool. Uh, if the names of the file and the public class are not the same? Good question. So, what happens if I change this to puppy? Puppy. Save. So, now let's go here and do Java C. Hello, Java. Error class puppy is public should be declared in a file named puppy.java. Huh? It tells you exactly what you did. Kind of nice. Uh, good. Other questions? Yeah. <laughs> Go. Uh, if we had a lot of code, a lot of functions, everything must be included in that public uh, class? Yes, but you can, ha you can have more, more files. You divide it up in more files, and I will tell you how to do that later. You can also have more sort of non-public classes. Uh, heto, Eli, heto. Yes and no is the answer. Sorry. There was, uh, sorry, just one second. Go. You said that you should provide the type of argument. Yes. But how do you put the string and number in printout? And it goes. Ah, okay. I think I understand. I'll tell you in one moment. I, I know what you mean. Heto uh, Kasam. Go. Explain what is the printout? Print L. Uh, print LN, you mean? Print F. Print F, as far as I know, I don't think I've seen it in Java. Does it exist in Java? I know printf exists in C++. In C++. Uh, I think the equivalent of that is println in Java, I think. Um, yeah, for now just use print or println, yeah? Um, other questions or should I, could, oh, yes. Can we run Java program without terminal? Yes, so, okay, question. What, when you guys have a file on your desktop called, I don't know, my essay dot uh, txt, right? What do you think happens when you double click on that file? So your computer has a something called a registry. The registry says this file extension should be opened with this application. Okay? So anything ending with .txt, for example, might default to opening an application called Notepad. An example, or Sublime, or whatever it is that you've configured your registry to be, right? So whenever you click on anything .txt, it will open whatever application is mapped to that file extension. So if you click on dot, I don't know, um, what's the DLC, it will open up Word because it's a, a DLC is a document or a Word file, right? So when you double click on it, it will usually open up Word. Now question, when we say open up Word, okay, or open up Notepad, the operating system runs Notepad, giving its main function as an argument the path to the file you double clicked on. Notepad then runs, comes up on your screen, then goes and reads out the file that is in the path that gave it and draws it. And that's what opening up a, a file means. Right? So when you double click on the .txt file, Notepad is run, the main argument is given the path to that file, Notepad comes up, then reads that path, reads that file and draws it for you on the screen. And that's how when you double click on the txt file, you get the file in front of you. So that's what this is. This is the arguments that are given to your program when your program starts. Now your program can start in a few ways. 
One is through the user interface. You double click on an icon and underneath the operating system calls your program, executes your program, runs your program, giving it the correct arguments for your main. Another way to do it is you can execute a program, any program, by actually typing the name of the program in your console. Okay? So you can execute a f any program that you have on your computer from your command line. R for those of you who are Windows users, do you remember the run terminal? There was like this run command? I don't know if it's used anymore, but when I was around it, it is? Okay. So what is run? Run is basically like one place to write one command, right? You, you say like open up Word and it opens Word. Well, you can do that in a terminal, except you can do more in the terminal. A run is like, it's a, you know, a much simplified version of a terminal. It lets you do one command and that's it, right? That's what run is. So what, what I'm telling you, so I understand I spoke a lot, but basically what I'm telling you is this. Any program can be executed through command line, including Java, including C++ programs, including any other programs you have. Programs can also be executed by double-clicking on an icon and going through the operating system. But at the end of the day, the same thing happens. A main is called with arguments, and your program starts. That's it. Cool. Um, so we all now kind of understand how that works, right? Okay, and if you just double click on the word icon, what arguments are passed to main? You don't click on the file, you just click, double click on word, just to open word. No arguments, exactly. Just main is run and word comes up. If you double click on the file, the argument is the file that you clicked on that it then draws when it comes up. That simple. And Word specifically, I think, if it doesn't get an argument, by default, it takes you to a new, new, new uh, document, right? Which you can then write in and then save that. It's an if statement. If I have a file, draw it. If I do not, create a new one, like an empty one, and let the user start typing. Got it? Okay. Um, now, we're going through this cycle where every time I change code, I have to go to the, to the terminal and do Java C and then Java and whatever, right? And there are faster ways of doing this. When you guys write code, when you write code for your homeworks, do this. It's okay. You don't have to do anything else. Just do exactly what I just did. Make a directory, put some Java files in it, do, then go to the terminal, Java C to compile, Java to run. That's all you have to do. What I have done is I have downloaded another program called Eclipse. What is Eclipse? Eclipse is a development environment, which is a really fancy way of saying it's an editor. It's a fancy editor that has lots of different things to help me write code, okay? Um, but at the end of the day, it's exactly the same thing, right? I have a list of Java files, just like I had in the other one. But instead of constantly going to the terminal and then doing Java C and then Java whatever, it lets me do things like, here, let me zoom in. I can just right click on, on a file uh, and then go to run as and then just run the application. Click on it and it runs. And here's the, hang on, and here's the console right here. You know, it's the same thing as going to the terminal but it just does everything for you. It does the Java C, it does the Java, and it puts a console right in your environment so you don't have to keep switching windows. Okay, so from now on, I'll be showing you Java using Eclipse, but don't be confused. It's exactly the same as the other scenario. How's that change, Hamas? Clear? Okay, so let's get going. Um, so this was the first program that we looked at, right? Which simply had the name, notice the name of the file is exactly, which is right there, here's the path. Uh, example one, hello world.java. So I did public class, exactly the same name. Um, and then I created this main function that then takes a list of arguments, fine, and does system.out.println, printing a single line, right? with this text, hello world, blah, blah, blah. 
no questions here, right? It's pretty straightforward. Yes? Okay. Again, don't worry about what this means and don't worry about what that means. We will get to that later. Okay. So that I think is pretty clear. Next one. Here's our next program. Uh, hang on. Okay. So again, we have a main function. The name of the class or a name of whatever this, this is, is the same as the name of the file. How did we, remind me, how did we create variables in, Java, in JavaScript? How? Just tell me. Const whatever, like age, is, you know, 34. Right? Something like this. Right? Um, we could also do let. And let can be changed, right? Which means age can now be, you know, 55. It could also be a string. Whatever. This is legal in JavaScript. You can change the value of age to anything you want. It doesn't always have to be the original value. This is called dynamic typing. Dynamic means it can change. Typing is the type. So the type of age here right now, when I do age is 34, what type is age in JavaScript? A number. It's a number. Good. When I then change that to 55, what type is it? A number. When I change it to a string, what type is it now? Ah, okay. So the type of the variable can change in JavaScript. Right? Again, dynamic typing. This is why when you create a variable, you don't say what it is. You don't say this variable will be a number. No. You just say, I'm creating a variable. The type is determined by the value. If the value is a number, it's a number. If the, if the value is a string, it's a string. Understand? In Java, we have strict typing, not dynamic typing. That is to say the types have to be exactly as stated and cannot change. So if we create age using let age in Java, we have to say, hey, this is a number. We also have to say the kind of number that it is. There are different kinds of numbers. There are integers, there are floats, there are doubles, there are shorts, there are longs. All of these things are kinds of numbers, and we'll go through what these mean in a moment. But the one that intuitively most of you understand is an integer, right? You all know what an integer is. So the way you say age is going to be an integer is by saying int. So this means age is a variable that can take in integers. So age is an integer and therefore is this legal? Can you do this? Yes, because 34 is an integer. Fine. Can you do this? No. Why? Is 55 not an integer? In Chechnya. No, no, but as noon age, it's not a constant. It's not a constant. Um, the, okay, I'll tell you. So the way to make it a constant is to do final. Yeah, but later. Don't worry about that. Okay, so you have age, which is an integer. You can then change it to another integer, no problem. This has to be a legal Java string, right? You can't, you can't do single quotes. Is this okay? Why? String is not an integer. Exactly, right? This is the key, right? The... If you say this variable is going to be an integer, it has to be an integer all the time. You can never not have it be an integer. Go. So you remember there is a double equal thing in JavaScript that you can equal a number to a string, another number yes. to a string. So if we do, is there something like that in there? No. So in Java, you have the thing that we were doing with triple equals. In Java, it's double equals. There is no type coercion the way you have in JavaScript. So that's it. So don't worry. So in my opinion, forget about that fancy one. Always just use the, the strict one. Yeah, so triple equals in JavaScript, double equals in Java. Go. Okay, if you do this, yeah, yes. If you do this, it's still invalid because four is not a four. It's a string that contains a character that is four. Right? So no, you cannot do this. And yeah. 
Uh, sorry, you go first and then you go. Uh, can we uh, sum them integer with a string? Yeah, you can concatenate. That's like awesome. Go. Can we write like str uh, in front of h in order to write string? Okay, good, good, good. So the question is, okay, so we understand how to make a variable that holds an integer. How do we make a variable that knows how to hold a string? Uh, not quite. You write string. Uh, and you write, you know, whatever, name. And then you put in there, you know, yeah, Joe. No. It's it's a it's a string in in Java is not a primitive. It's a, it's a, it's an actual object. Again, write like. It's like a string. Huh? Can we again write string and then h is equal to some other? Yes. No, because then you get a collision, right? Now now you have a collision between variables. So no, you cannot do that. So notice how I have a string that is a name. Here I have a string and a list of strings that is args. It might begin to make sense to you. If I wanted to create a function, by the way, let's do public, static, void, um, say hi. Or whatever, let's call it jo foo. And then in here, I want foo to take two numbers, two integers. What do I do? No, two integers. Int a, int b. So in, ja in JavaScript, we would just do a and b, right? But remember, in Java, we have to say what it is. Int a and int b. And then this can return. I want to return their sum, their addition. What do I do? Exactly. Wow, good call. What, the reason why this is giving me an error is because I've said that this function does not return anything. What does this function return? Ah, okay. So now, so now, let's call that function, so let's call foo with a four and a six. And let's store the result into a result variable. Why is this a red? Because it's not JavaScript. Keep going. <laughs> Because what is result? Result is a variable, right? I have to say what it is. So result is an int. Okay, now I can system dot out dot print line result. And if I were to run this, what would I see on the console? Ten, exactly. Okay, the question is, this was using arrays. Why am I not using arrays here? Because I'm, it's not an array, it's just one value. It's an array, it's an array, but it's an For, for, I'm confused. Main function. Main function, yeah. Maining. Maining, meng cheng talis. So, once our system not talis, yeah, for application is suma. No, okay, so, this, so the question is can we just do this? No. You have to say what the variable is, yeah? You have to say this is a number variable or this is a string variable. Question. Um, so to store a boolean, so you guys kind of remember binary numbers? To store a boolean, how many binary numbers do you need? You actually kind of need one, right? A one means yes and a zero means no. True, false, right? So to store a boolean, to store true or false, you actually kind of only need one. You could use some extra ones if... Yeah, but that's not... The value itself is just one thing. Not is an oper operation. It's an instruction, okay? So just to store whether something is true or not, a variable, actually only kind of requires one bit, right? Now you could have additional bits to help you, but really at the core of it, you just need one thing. How many bits do you need to store an integer? 
Exactly. It depends how long you want integers to be, how much, how much you want to support, right? And it so happens that um, an int has four bytes. Four bytes. How many bits is that? Four times eight. Good. 32. Exactly. So it's 32 bits. Okay. So 32 bits, that means the highest number you can have is 2 to the power of 32. Yeah. Um, good. Okay. So the number of bits that you need, the, the amount of memory that you need to represent a number is much larger than the amount of memory you need to represent a boolean, right? A true or false, you just need one byte. A byte being eight bits. Uh, you just need one of those. But for a number, for an int, you need four, right? So what that means is that when this variable is created, a part of memory is allocated to store information about that variable. The amount of memory that is allocated, that is taken from the computer that says, this is mine, this is my memory, and here's how much I'm going to take from you, is based on the type. The type tells the virtual machine, take this much memory. Go. Long, 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 no, no. Me have long karasans. And by the way, long is like the, the, the big number. If you want to store a really big number, you use long. Go. Uh, do the integers also store negative numbers? Yeah. Two to the power of 32 is equally divided? Or? Uh, I believe it is equally divided because I think what the last bit determines the, the thing, whether it's positive or negative. So it, maybe it's 2 to the power of 31 with the extra bit flipping this way or that way. Can we use sign, down sign, properties here or not? Unsigned int, signed int. No, there's, there's no unsigned int per se, but you can just. No, you, you just. It's either. It either has a negative or a positive. There's no unsigned. Yeah? And one more question. So here, we, uh, if we create an array, we should specify how many elements it should have. Yeah, yeah. We'll get to that soon. We'll get to arrays later. Go. Also, when we are doing division, uh -huh. like from where we know that whether the result is integer or not. Uh, For example, like uh -huh. we are dealing with large numbers, yeah. and then when we are dividing, we must write let some uh, no, not let something. Uh -huh. Integer is something for variable, and we don't know whether it's integer or not. Good question. Okay, okay. So let, let's let's actually try some experiments to figure this out. So um, why don't we just print the result of this for now? Or, no, you know what, let's keep this here, let's keep this as an int, and let's, instead of adding, let's divide. Yeah? So 4 divided by 6 is really what we're doing here, right? Um, and let's see what the result is. Let me delete this other stuff for now. Hang on. Uh, let me get rid of all the stuff. Okay. Zoom out. Let me save. And then let me run this. So, run as Java application. Okay, I get a zero. Why do you think I get a zero? Because we specified that we should have integer. So it's yeah. Because it's zero point something, right? Is the result. But when you take an integer, it, you just take the integer part of the result. And so you get a zero. But if you did something like a double, hang on. And then here you did double. Let's see what happens now. Uh, wait, there should be just a play button. Here we go. 0, 0.0. Meet up, huh? Integer It's precision. It's precision. Yeah, you're right. Wait. Let's try a float. Let's let's have these be be floats too. Hang on. Okay. 
a and b are integers hang on so if you divide an int by an int i think if you divide an int by an int you get an int no no uh, yeah 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 okay okay here's yes no it, it is the case look okay so if you just do this right int int when you run this operation, you're doing it between two integers, and so it treats everything as an int, okay? And then all you're doing is because you're returning the result of an int, but you're saying float, it gets converted into a float. So an int gets converted into a float, which means zero gets converted into a float, which is 0.0. .0. Okay, so two ways you can do this. You can either cast it to a float like this, and now if I run it, spasi, now I get that. This is a nuance that happens in strictly typed languages. What do I mean by casting? What you're saying is take this number, which is an integer, but treat it as if it was a float. So turn it in the three into a 3.0. Okay, so you turn a into a 4.0 a 6 into a 6.0, and then when you divide them, you're treating them as floats. And so the result is float, which means the 0.6 whatever stays inside the result. Go. Can you divide it by zero? So on the on the Ah, good question. What happens if you divide by zero? So what do you think is going to happen? Number, I don't know what kind of... Um, yeah, you can't divide by zero. You should not ever divide by zero. <laughs> Go. Ah, if you have float up, what make the float on him? Science? Te darts nem hink. The or parse float. Do you need a function to turn it in? You can't just cast it a string to a thing. Go. Okay. In ja okay. In JavaScript, listen. In JavaScript, this is okay. You can just say let a, and then later set a to four. What you can't do is const a and then and then a to six. Why can't you do this? Because it's a constant. By definition, you cannot change it, right? So, which is why const never allows you to just set a. You have to say what it is, otherwise it's going to remain empty forever. Um, in Java, float is like let. It's not, it's not, you'd, final is what you use to make it constant. I'll tell, you, I'll tell you that later. For now, it's just a variable, which means you can change it. What that means is you could make a variable, float a, and then later set that to whatever you want. Uh, if we do not say what it is going to be, for example, we have float a, it allocates memory. For a float, yeah. Yes. For that much, yeah. And if we just print it out without giving the value, what it would be? If you print what out? Tell me. If you do not specify a equals five, just... Ah, if I just print a, what does a have by default? The local variable a may not, ah, this is just a warning, hang on. Proceed, yeah, proceed. Bossy, in Main Java error, a local variable a may not have been initialized. Okay. Um, how do I say this? I need to change the, the rules on my computer. Look, I, I set up Eclipse so that it's very strict. And whenever things like this happen, it, it doesn't even let me do it. It says, whatever you're trying to do is weird. You made a variable and you're just using it for no reason without even giving it a value. So by default, it errors out. But if it allocates memory, it should put something there, yes. It needs to put something there. Hang on. So, 
a string has a default of null, whatever, a character does some default character. So, so, yeah? Okay. Uh, okay, other questions? Okay, so going back to the basics, um, I think we got pretty advanced there. Wait, let's go back to basics, okay? Forget all this fancy stuff that, that we were just talking about with casting and I mean you don't forget you, you understand but for the for those of you who got confused there Let's keep it very simple. You know them So in JavaScript the way to make a variable is let a be 4 In Java the way to make a variable is still you do a is 4 but you have to say that a is an integer or whatever it is so in this case, it's an integer, okay? Uh, you can um, make another one that's a string. So string B is a string high. How do I concatenate these two together? Like that. And now result will have four high. No, you could just print this. You could print this. You could pass it system dot out dot print line. You could just print the result of that. Hang on. Ah. Oh, ah, kinetic. It's happening. Okay. There you go. You could do that. You could pass this to a function as an argument. You could do whatever you want. This results, this is the same thing as doing uh, for high. You see how this is the same thing as that. Could we cast it to string and then the two Cast it to what? Cast the string to A. Cast the string to A? Cast a string to, you don't cast it to another variable, you cast it to a type. Before A, you just write string with braces. Before A, here? Yeah. Ah, yeah, you could. Is it better or? Worse? No, it's, uh, hang on. Why is it not working? Wait. Ah. Shoot. Science? Um, no, what you can do is you can stringify something, but that's, we'll get to that later. But no, it will, it will do it for you. Remember in JavaScript, wait, wait, guys, remember in JavaScript, it, when you have a plus operator, remember it's overloaded, right? If it has a string on either side, it converts already by default the other one to a string and sticks them together. Yeah? So you get that for free. You don't have to actually do that yourself. In fact, one common way, by the way, to turn a number to a string is to just concatenate an empty string. You see that? If I want to turn a into a string, I can just do string a stir is a plus an empty string. There. Now this contains four as a string. It, this, like this? You can, but then what do you think ends up in here? What does this mean? This means a string with a character A inside. Ask and such, Okay. Um, so, okay, let's go back to there. Uh, so, four. There you go. So this is the same thing as this. By the way, comments are exactly the same as in JavaScript. If you noticed. Okay, if you wanted to comment out all this, you could either just, you know, add it to every line. But if you don't want to do that, another way is you, and this is also works in JavaScript, is you do open star, and then you star close. And that comments out all this. Yes. Can you explain the return part of what we did previously, that we deleted the drawing? Yeah, okay. So look, when talking about functions, let's create a function here. Public, static, uh, void, let's say, uh, woof, system.out.println, woof, woof. Okay, 
So here I can call woof. What is woof? It's a function. What am I passing into the hole? Nothing. Why? Because it doesn't take anything. It's the kind of function that doesn't take anything in and it doesn't give you anything. It just does something. What does it do? It prints woof woof to the, to the console, right? To the standard output. Woof woof. Any questions so far? Is this clear? Okay. Now, if I wanted to not print woof woof, but whatever text I give it, I make a variable here, like um, uh, sound, and then I print sound. And I pass to the hole, um, meow, meow. Okay. There's an error here. Why? Exactly. What is sound? What is sound? Tell me. It's a string. Good. So now if I run this, I will get, what will I see on the console? Meow, meow. Meow, meow. If I call it, it's funny, I called it wolf and I'm calling it meow. Okay. Um, what will I see on the console now? Huh? What will I see on the console? Talk to me. Aitra! Look at this! Es in Chanum. Oh, Uj! Console! Hima Hartsantalis. What will I see on the console? Console Mishkatasnam. Ah! Meow meow on one line. On the next line, I'll see woof woof. If I did this, by the way, what would I, what would I see? Exactly. Meow meow woof woof. On the same line, without space. Right, so you'd see meow meow woof woof. Right? Okay. Eight kind of parzajan. Hastat. Anything, any confusion so far? This part like in A is uh, no move this part in main, not the uh, another how we speak word. Ah, you mean can you put this inside of this? No, that's uh, the roof and new part, the last part. Yes, huh? uh, above stating the No. Because here's how the program runs, guys. When your Java application runs, the first thing that happens is main gets called. This is your start. The start of your program is main. Whatever you put in there is what will happen when your app starts. Then main calls these other functions to do whatever you want to do. And can public state avoid being No, it has to follow the syntax. Is, yeah. How can we add space between meow meow and space? Well, one, one thing is that, oh sorry, one way is you could do this, or this, or, or you could, ah, you could do this. Any of those will do. Come wolf space, come whatever. This, is, this means string with one character in it. The character is space. This means a string with one character. The character is A. Yeah. I've got, I think I've got confused with this void thing. If, if it says void means it has no output or void? Void just means this function doesn't return anything. But it still does something. What does it do? In other words, if you were to do this, this is an error because woof does not return anything, right? You're right. But it still does something, right? In this case, it prints to the... Turkish? Uh, he imagine. Uh, here we can have forward the expression. Yes, I mean, we, for example, in this case, we can use a function woof before defining it. Yeah, and uh, what he's saying is you could put this here and use it. Yes, you can. Go. An array of strings, yeah. And what does it give to the main? Good question. So, in the command line, when you run, remember how I was running, hang on. So the question is, what goes in main? Remember how I was doing, uh, hang on, sorry. Java, hang on. Okay, and then I was typing hello, and this was running my Java, right? Yes? If I were to then write 
um, something else like this is fun. This is fun is what would get passed into my list of arguments. That's the argument. Now you might say, when is this used? Well, in order to run node from command line, or sorry, to run an application in command line, if you just type the name of the app, it runs. Like you type word, it will get word. But if you write word and then the path to a file, what will word do? Find Open that file, right? Render that file. So that's what, so in main, when word gets that path, it has an if. Do I have a file path? If it does, it draws that file. If it does not, it does some default, like gives you a blank sheet to write a new document in. Joe here? Cool. Um, other questions? Questions or concerns? Cool. Okay. So let's go back to this. Okay, so I'm getting back to your question. Up until this point, wait. Are there any questions so far regarding what you see here? Is all of this code completely comprehensible? Yes? Okay, now, instead of printing, I want, instead of just printing sound, I want it to return to me if the sound is made by a cat or a dog. So we say if sound is now. Here's the trick. In JavaScript, we were using triple equals, right? Equal, equal, equal. In Java, the only difference is you use two. That's it. That's the only difference. So in Java, you just do this. So if it's equal to mu mu, what do we return? Cat. Cat. Uh huh. That's like awesome. Else, notice the syntax is exactly the same as what you know, right? Return dog. There's an error here, which says void methods cannot return a value. Exactly. Cat is a string and dog is a string. So we have to say, oh, oops, woof needs to return what? So whatever your return, whatever this is, return something, right? Whatever that is, is the type that you specify here. Yeah? So if we return, not break. Right. Return by definition implies you're returning, so you have to return something. Wait, you could do this. Wait. Wait. That's okay. Because you're returning nothing. Exactly. You're returning nothing, which is void by definition. It's nothing. Jokes? Yeah. Go. So, if, uh, in one case, I want to return a stream, and another, say, an integer. Can't do that. Can't do that. You have to return one thing. Or you have to make another function that returns that. But then the arguments have to be different, too. Because then, if you call a function, how do you know which you're calling? Ask <laughs> You never know if you're going to get a string or an int back that way. It has a com, or you just write two different functions with slightly different names that says, you know, wolf returning string, wolf returning int. Oh, thanks. Okay. So, uh, question. So now I say, what is wolf returning now? A string. So I can put it into a variable that knows how to hold a string, right? So I want to put it into a variable called, you know, is. Um, uh, animal one. What is animal one? It's the thing that is returned by wolf. What does wolf return? So therefore, this has to be a. So I take the result of calling this and I put it into this. And the result of this is a string, so I put it into a string. Let's get rid of this. And then we'll in charge on it. No, now that I have these, I can now system dot out dot print lot mm, animal one. Can we do the same thing with the turret, but 
I don't understand. Uh, can we do the same thing with returns or return any more point without void? Main is the application that is run, is the, sorry, is the function that is run, right? You don't, what are you going to, who are you going to return to? The application just ran you and forgot about you, right? Okay, by the way, in, in C++, you do return, it, it also has a main, but it has an integer that you return. A zero if everything is okay, and I think a one, right, if there's an error, something like that. Don't worry about that. Okay, so uh, let's run this. Uh, where's the but Miyasuda? Ah, oops. Shumjago. <coughs> Animal. Ah, here we go. Cat. Uh, okay. Sorry. Okay, so for the first one, Meow Meow returned cat. The second one, Wolf Wolf returned dog. Yay! Speechless, I know. Crazy, right? Um, and if we didn't return cat, just write cat. It wouldn't return, right? If you wrote Tremosco. If, uh, if we didn't uh, write return. You mean if you returned like a five? Like that? No, we didn't write return. Oh, if you didn't write return, then you're not returning. In fact, if you don't return, if you just do this, this is an error. Why? Because in this case, you're not returning anything, but you made a promise. You said you're supposed to return a string. Where is the string? I'm waiting for a string. You can't make a promise and break it. Now it's okay. Right? So again, think of it this way. Actually, this is a good way to think about it. This is a promise. It's saying this function will return this. Okay? And it has to. You can't change your mind. And if, you write void, if you write void, then you have to return nothing. Oh, okay. If she's saying if you just did um, if this returned nothing, if this just did system dot out dot print print line, you know, whatever. If this happened, right? Um, now you have a problem because you can't convert a void to a string. This, the result of this is a void, right? But you're trying to put a void into a string. Can't do that. You can only put a string into a string. Ooh, okay, wow. Okay, we're, we're out of time. All right, let's take a photo and go home. Oh, one, one more thing. Hi. Go to sololearn.com. Uh, sololearn.com, there it is, and take the Java course. It will help you learn Java. Uh, actually, I don't know which one is better. Either one. It will just for extra help.